I'm Dr. David Klein with Stages of Life Medical Institute on behalf of Florida Laboratory Analysis Holdings. In order to standardize the approach to taking a nasal swab sample, it's important for you to understand a few things about anatomy. Now, most everybody else thinks that because the angle of the nose is such that, gee, it makes sense to shove something up into the nose, when you're doing these sorts of swabs, that is a guarantee to do one of two things, either to hurt somebody, okay, which, in which case they will never come back, or you can cause things to bleed. But either way, you're going to get a lousy sample. So what I did is I went ahead and got the appropriate transfer medium, okay, we get little packets, look like this, okay. And what this is is a universal vis uh, viral transport medium, and it's a packet that are put together with the tube in there, a little brush, and basically it's got everything you need except for the patient label and the sample. So what you do is very, very simple. You sit beside the patient. Patient should be to your left if you're right-handed, to your right if you're left-handed. And you have them turn away from you ever so gently, and with one finger, gloved finger hopefully, you push their nose gently up. And what this does is it explodes, exposes the, the nostril to you a little bit more easily. It's kind of hard to do on this plastic model. Okay, but just the same, this will help. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this thing as if it were a real human being. It's just about the right size. So you would push gently up on the nose. And that sample brush looks something like this. And it's a very, very thin device. Not to be confused with a Q-tip. If you shove a Q-tip up somebody's nose, it is going to do some damage. So what you do is you push gently up. This model will not permit this. And then this lays back. It goes straight back up against a structure called the turbinate. Now the turbinate is where the, um, is where the sinus drains. This is where the, the fluid accumulates. If you go up the nose, as is so often done, it hits right into an area that has nothing but something called Kieselbach's plexus, which bleeds. It hurts and it bleeds and you get nothing. No sample, bad, re bad result. So it goes straight back. How far does this go? And the answer is about an inch and a half to two inches. You slide it back, you gently give it a twist, okay, and what it will do is it'll pick up enough mucus and goo to do your job and then you slide, you gently come out. With the patient looking away from you, is the way this is best done, the patient will not sneeze in your face. That's the reason why you want them facing away from you. Otherwise, your personal protective equipment is gonna be fairly useless. So now you have the brush, it's all done. So you have a transfer medium. Primarily, okay, your main concern is not confusing patient to patient. So the label should already be on this tube. So before you open up um, a chart or whatever you're gonna do, make sure that the label goes on this guy first. Then what you do is very, very simple. You unscrew this, and then there's all, a little bit of liquid in the bottom here. It's a kind of a pinkish liquid. You take your swab, drop it in, spin it again, wouldn't you know? Okay, that generally gets most things done, but on this thing is a little tiny red dot. Let me see if we can pick it up on the television there. Okay, and what you can do with this is very, very easy. It will shatter at that point. You can break it and off she goes. You drop it in, you put it back together, and it's ready to roll. Okay, now, so you'll see the brush on the inside. It's all finished. Got to make sure that they're labeled. This is very, very important. When these things are being transported by ground, okay, in other words, one of our technicians picks it up, does, you know, it's usually not a big problem. The problems arise when these things go by airplane. So if you're in Anchorage, if you're in Hawaii or elsewhere, and these things are being gathered, odds are it's going to come to us by jet. You can about guarantee it. So this has got to be sealed properly. If not, the expansion on the inside blows the material all over the inside of the, the box. This thing is being shipped in and it will not work well. Do you have to take a piece of tape and wrap it around this? You can, but it really is not necessary. So this little guy right now is snugged up. It is ready to go. Patient has a, an ID number on here and you'll get your results very, very shortly. So again, to recap, you need to look for the turbinate, the nasal turbinate. As the, the brush slides backwards, it'll hit it. It'll brush right up against it. 
spin quickly and out. The whole procedure should take maybe three to five seconds if you're slow. If you're fast, it'll take one to two seconds. And nobody will even know you did it. The faster you go, the happier people are, the happier you're going to do, and you'll be able to get through your list of people that you have to do very, very quickly. This is Dr. David Klein with Stages of Life Medical in Longwood, Florida for Florida, Florida Laboratory Analysis in Jacksonville, Florida. And again, if you have any questions, I am available by telephone. Um, it's best to go through FLA and then they'll reach me and I'll get back with you. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure to help you.